exactly if you have the power right now what more could you do well i i what the They're different from what the authorities are already doing uh, the the foreign help the us uh, us uh, military the navy which is helping us find such an in search and rescue what other things you think the, the authorities are missing something or and what is it that you can point out i i'm sorry i don't think i can i can do much more than what they are already doing i think they have done everything possible uh, i i know the government is very serious about the whole thing so they have i think gathered all those concerns to do the the search and uh, that's me. One question. Um, there seems to be a confusion between the capabilities of the civilian uh, radar and the military radar. Uh, if the transponders have been switched off and if the aircraft dropped to below uh, civilian air traffic radar coverage, would the military radar be able to pick it up, number one? Um, number two, even without the aircraft squawking, would the military radar be able to track and determine the uh, size of the aircraft based on the radar cross section. I think the military radar would be able to do, but uh, depends on how low that is. Uh. So I'm really not very competent to say in, in this, because military radar is supposed to track, because we are military is more competent to do this. To the best of your knowledge, uh. even Squawking, it would be, it would still be able to track the aircraft. Oh, I think so. How do you deal with the passengers, families? Oh, passengers. Uh, of course. Now, you have the next of kin, relatives, friends, and so on. They are very emotional about this. So my experience is that you have to handle them properly. You have to handle them sympathetically because uh, they are emotional and we have to do everything possible to assist them in giving the information and whatever. Uh, but I think this, the airline is doing everything possible now. They have their own committee. They are doing, they are doing all this. Now, after when everything is over, then th there is another stage where you have to deal with their relatives, next of kin, and so on. This is a question of compensation. Yeah, I remember Tanjung Kupang incident last time. It took us about one year to settle the compensation, to pay damages, and so on. Because they have relatives, they have children, they have wives, they all sorts. And some, sometimes some of them don't agree with each other. So we, sort, we have to sort that out. So I, I think Mission Airlines will have a tremendous task ahead of them in dealing with the compensation issue. And of course there is a law. When that comes about, there's another convention which applies. That is the Warsaw Convention of 1929. Uh, you have to go through the process using that convention. And then, uh, I can tell you, it, it is also quite a nightmare to deal with this. So, when you have a disaster like this, I am really sorry for the airline, because not only they have to deal with the accident itself, even after all is over, they still have to deal with so many other issues. So they have really to be uh, well equipped. Do you, think, do you think Malaysia Airlines can recover from this? I, I think they are quite prepared to deal. They, they must be prepared to deal with this. There's no way they must do it. Uh, they have the people there. It's a matter of organizing. Uh, I think now there are more qualified people than during my time. So I see no reason why they cannot do. Mm. Since there was an air directive issued regarding uh, structural cracks near the SATCOM antenna, 
do you know if uh, Malaysia Airlines uh, instituted the, uh, procedures to address that issue? Um, the minister said that the aircraft had been declared airworthy before this. Oh, this, this particular aircraft, eh? Uh, on the 777, uh, there was an air directive issued uh, to Boeing. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm not aware of that. From what I inquired earlier, this aircraft has gone through the proper checks and they have found to have, to have no faults, anything of any kind and it, it was airworthy when it was flying. Uh, that is confirmed by their people. And I know the Malaysian airline pilots and engineers have been well trained using international standards. And they are just as good as any other pilot or engineer in any other part of the world. I have no doubt about that. Mm. I hate to mm. say this or raise mm. this, but there are also some reports that say it could have been internal sabotage. I find it hard to believe. I'm sure you do too, but could that be a possibility? Internal among the employees? Yes. I doubt very much. Not to, not to this great extent uh, of sabotaging an aircraft flying, uh, but in the office, probably they play tricks among themselves. <laughs> that one is quite straightforward, but not this aircraft thing. Not, not this elaborate? No, 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 no. Not this extent. Yeah. Don't, you find it, don't you find it a bit strange when you, uh, when you raise something in you that a pilot with 18,000 flying hours do you need to have a simulator in his house? Well, you know, it's nothing strange there because there are people who have certain interests. They themselves want to carry on experimenting and improving because all this aviation thing, it doesn't mean that that's the end of the story, you know. You can carry on improving and improving. And some of them carry on learning on, on their own. Uh, so if he has a simulator in his house, maybe that's a good thing. He wants to continue to improve. Maybe improve the simulator itself. This is a scientific uh, knowledge. Hmm. But, but, but do we have access to MES simulator? Of course, they, they, they have access. Uh, but having f if a pilot having passed the examinations, having gone through all the processes, they are well equipped. In fact, they don't need to learn anymore. But they want process general knowledge. Yes, they can continue. Once they have, they are certif certificated. They are well equipped to do. So as far as you are concerned, then see. What is the most strange thing in this particular incident? Because it has never happened. Yes, as, as, as I said, this, this is a really puzzling thing. I mean, uh, we have not traced in the sea. We have not traced on land. And people from foreign countries who, who are real experts also cannot trace, so it's something which I think we have to continue to pray to God. Yes. Yes. Uh, very soon we will find out. I, I know it's a very emotional thing for the, uh, I mean the relatives of the passengers and so on. I, I, I know uh, one the, 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 the pilot was the brother of my legal assistant. Uh, so, we are equally very worried about all this. So, uh, I, I, I myself, I must say, right from day one, I have not been sleeping also, trying to learn or trying to get the news and trying to contribute whatever I can in helping the situation. Mm. Okay. Uh that's the case. Uh, thank you very much, Tansri, for 
letting us uh, your expert opinion on MHD 70.